What's up guys? Long time no see. So sorry about the delay. We have been eyeballs deep in all kinds of awesome projects. Tons of cool stuff coming down the line. But today we want to do a really special presentation for you. So stay tuned. What's up guys? Good to see you again. Uh, sorry it's been so long since uh, we've done another video, but it has been pretty nuts around here. Industry has been insane. Lots of knives coming in, lots of knives going out, and I have been totally overwhelmed and totally getting behind on New Knife Wednesday. So that's what this is. This is New Knife Wednesday. This is the point at which I show you all the cool stuff that we have done in the past, what we're doing currently, and some of the stuff that we're going to do in the future. So super looking forward to working with you guys today, showing you some really cool stuff today. We are working on releasing our kitchen knife line. It has been two years in the making. So, pretty excited about that. If you don't know who I am, I'm Jay Kobach. I've been making knives for the better part of two decades, and I really enjoy making the highest quality tool I possibly can, bar none. Um, hopefully, nobody can argue that. If they will, I'm sure I can argue back. Um, but I'm always trying to learn, always trying to innovate, and always trying to use the best possible materials, engineering, machinery, anything that I can do to make the highest quality tools that I possibly can. We make things, we may, we build t tools for work. Um, you know, and that's, that's the bottom line. We build things for work. Uh, we have lots of collectors, but at the end of the day, I always have work in mind. Um, I've always been a hard worker. I always expect people to work hard for me. And in turn, you know, reward comes with that. And the reward uh, a lot of the time for me is the fact that we get amazing tools made and you amazing customers come in and you buy this stuff from us. So much appreciate all that. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our kitchen knife line. I'm going to give you some specifications and some breakdowns. I'm going to butcher the names on all these knives. Uh, but first and foremost, let me give you a little bit of backstory. Um, about six years ago, I started making some custom kitchen knives. Um, made quite a few of them, probably 100, 200 of them. Um, and it was just more of a traditional, you know, eight inch chef knife that most everybody's seen in their kitchen. Uh, I've always, as if you follow me at all, had a penchant for the uh, Japanese blade culture. Uh, so I really thought it would be, I was really keen on making a three knife set of, uh, you know, more Japanese inspired kitchen knives. So having said that, I didn't name these any different than the traditional style name. The blade shape is very traditional. Um, this is not my take on blade shape. I went very traditional on this kitchen knife set, uh, for the blade shape. Handle shape, uh, obviously I wanted to make that my own. Um, so we went some pretty cool shapes that I'll show you here in a second. And, uh, you know, we went some really cool materials. I wanted to do, to have kind of a tactical kitchen knife set, uh, something that could be at home, you know, you get attacked by ninjas while you're cooking dinner for your family and you need to defend yourself, you know, silliness like that aside. Um, I really did like the, the way that the traditional Japanese style chef knives and uh, Sentukus and uh, Asubas, Yusubas and Hansukis. I, I like the way those blade shapes work in the kitchen. And uh, I decided to go with that blade shape, uh, my handle shape. And then we went, we spent probably a year just working on different uh, PVD, DLC, and different types of coatings that we can put on the blades that would hold up really well. That was really challenging because we had a lot of prototypes that we had coded and we went back and forth with testing and, you know, immersion testing, dishwashers, cutting certain materials and cutting, uh, you know, food safe products, you know, or cutting into it and maintaining that food safeness while also having a, a cool black finish. Uh, you know, that was, that was pretty important to me. I really wanted to go with the black. You don't see that very often and we finally accomplished that. So I'm super excited about that. So the first knife in the line uh, is gonna be your Hansuki. And let me make sure I say the name right here. It is H-O-N-E-S-U-K-I. The Hansuki. 
kind of like a meat cleaver style knife. And it is pretty awesome in the kitchen for meat. I tell you, this knife will put a, put a hurting on anything that you want to chop with it. It's got a solid handle. You know, it fills the hand. And mind, the temperature around here has been ridiculous. So it is a, a little warm. So mind the uh, grubby prints on there. And we will cut to some B-roll so you can see this more clearly. I know I am wearing a black shirt, so that is not super helpful. Oh, by the way, you like the new shirts? Pretty awesome. Not the dude modeling it, of course, but, you know, let me turn around here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Got some new shirts. They'll be up on the website. Make sure you check those out. At any rate, moving forward, we've got the Hansuki. Pretty slick meat style knife we did go slightly out of tradition with these knives and more in tradition with what people in the united states are used to and we went with a v-grind versus a chisel grind um, personally i like the v-grind a little bit better it seems to clear the food a little bit better than just a straight chisel grind um, but then again i'm super amateur we actually had professional chefs uh, test this out the Japanese cleaver. It's a little cleaver, but it's a Zubazan. It's, this has been the favorite knife of our chefs. Just making a little bit of a rutabaga slaw right here. Look at it. Look at it go. Man, this is awesome. Again, this knife does anything. You want to cut some turkey? Hey, no problem. You want to cut some hard vegetables, some daikon radishes? Go for it. Very, very nice, straight cut, super balanced, light and sharp. Great, great knife. Let's take that salmon off the skin. Look at that beautiful cut. Very clean cut. What a knife. I mean, that's obviously it's a knife for anything raw. I made a carpaccio the other day. Just very thin slivers of meat. Now we're just going to chop it because it is a cleaver and we're going to have a perfect salmon tartare in just about no time at all. Great, great knife. Santuku, Japanese style chef knife. A beautiful knife Fantastic steel, very well balanced, as you will see. We just chop a couple of mushrooms here real quick. Maybe we're gonna try ourselves on some onion julienne. This, of course, is the working knife of every kitchen. Very nice work. So we're gonna make some mushroom gravy in a minute. Great knife. We're gonna try to shred some cabbage next. It's a must in the German cuisine. Look at that. Braised red cabbage should be on the menu every day. Again, perfect balanced blade. The knife has good weight, but it's not, not overly heavy. So for a long day's work, beautiful cut, no shredding, perfect. I think you got a very good knife at hand right here. Hanosuki, a beautiful Japanese style combi knife. We're going to start working on an orange here, just a little bit of an orange fillet. Very good time of the year to get some oranges. Look at that, beautiful fillets. I could work that knife, definitely table side. That's a combi, and I'm going to show you a couple more tricks to do with this knife. All right, we're going to fillet this fish. Just a perfect knife for any, any smaller fish. Of course, for the larger fish, you want to have a little bit of a bigger knife.
that's beautiful over the bone. Now we're gonna leave the skin on this fish, but as I told you, perfect, clean, crisp cut. Next thing we're gonna do with this beautiful knife, we're gonna debone a chicken. Okay, we're gonna debone, partially debone this chicken. And again, this combi knife is awesome. Just a very, very clean cut. If you see the tip, looks more dangerous than it is. It just does exactly what you want it to do. I love this knife. Great hardworking knife. Look, just a couple of cuts and you're ready to go. Great Japanese combi knife. Pretty excited about that. Super happy they were willing to help us out and make sure that we got this right on the first try without having to do a bunch of revisions and all this stuff. We've been, like I said, testing for several years trying to get this off the ground and making sure that we do it right. So that was very important to us. So the next knife is the Santuku. And now that, that's a big knife. Again, traditional blade shape, untraditional handle shape and coating. This thing is crazy light. It's deceptive, very deceptive how light this is. Uh, and we'll get into the specifications. And then we have the Yasuba, which is an awesome little, kind of like a paring knife almost. And would make a killer combat knife if necessary. Very pointy, very stabby. So, getting into the specifications, you'll have to bear with me here because i got to open up the laptop and three different knives. It's really hard to, to get all these measurements here, so let's, uh, let's dive in. So, starting at the uh, top with the Hansuki, the uh, blade length. Pull this up here. So blade length, you're looking at edge to edge. You're looking at just over six and a half inches. So from tip of the edge to tip here, just over six and a half. It's actually uh, 6.58 inches, 6.6 .6 inches. Uh, handle length on that guy. And we'll just do the carbon fiber handle length. Uh, you're looking at four and a sixteenth on the handle length, just for the carbon fiber portion of this from here to here. And then you have another, you know, three quarter of an inch, half inch in between. So plenty of room for big mitts, but still not so crazy that it's like hanging out of your hand. On the Sintuku, we actually did increase the handle length uh, because it, our chef testing it said, you know, on the traditional style, big bladed uh, chef style knife, you want a little bit longer handle. So we went with that. It actually helped with the balance quite a bit. Um, blade thickness on this guy uh, is a fair amount thicker than the other ones. On the Hansuki, the blade thickness, let me uh, zoom in here. was eighth inch. So we have a eighth inch blade thickness on this guy, the Hansuki. And all the rest of them are 332nd, if I'm not mistaken. So let's pull that up. Yeah, 332nd on all these other guys. The Sentuku, 332nd, and the Yusuba is 332nd thickness. So the only other, the only, the thicker one is obviously the meat knife, the cleaver style knife. That is obvi for obvious reasons. When you need to chop through some stuff, that is the way to go. Um, so diving into the rest of the specifications here. On the overall thickness of the Hansuki, it's uh get my calipers going here and of course I'm out of battery so we're about 600 thousandths on that guy and then 
obviously just a little bit thinner, just shy of 600, we're about 550 on the uh, handle thickness on the Sentuku and the Yasuba. And then moving on to the Santuku blade length, you are looking at 8 inches on the nose from tip to tip. And you're looking at a 5 inch handle here and then a f basically five and a, five and a half, five and a quarter to the end of the choil. I guess that's what you want to call it, the ricasso, the plunge, so to speak. Works a little differently with kitchen knife lingo, so bear with me, you know. I like to make stuff. I don't like to name things. Uh, so, yeah. Then moving on to the Yasuba blade length on that guy. So we're looking at 5 inches for the Yasuba on the blade length, tip to tip. Which is perfect size. Very light. Slightly biased handle weight, so the blade feels just exceptionally nimble. Where the Sentuku is pretty balanced and is slightly blade heavy, so it gives you a real good, doesn't make you overly tired when you're using it. Uh, you know, it makes it very, very easy to manipulate, but still gives you a little bit of extra weight there to, you know, really cut in when you're, when you're digging in at the tip. Uh, so, you know, having said that, we've spent an exceptional amount of time working on these. I really hope that you guys like this stuff. We'll cut to a bunch of B-roll and some still photos with pictures and measurements and stuff like that so you can really dive deep dive into this. Um, like I said, I appreciate you guys really being patient with this. I know we've had a lot of requests to do a kitchen knife line and do more of the kitchen knives that we've done in the past. Uh, some of the past kitchen knives that we've done, the kitchen knife, uh, the chef knives, we'll probably start doing again here soon once we get this line off the ground, but I've dedicated a lot of my design uh, time to getting these off the ground and now I can kind of refocus on the traditional you know US kind of styled chef knife so super excited about that take a look for our tactical kitchen knife line they will be available very soon and we will get some dates up as soon as we know when we are going to have them finished and ready to ship out to you guys so super excited about that again if you are not subscribed please Drop down there, smash that subscribe button. Make sure you're following us on social media. We've got Facebook, Instagram, all of what bells and whistles. And make sure you hit our website. Hit our website, sign up for our email list. Our email list, we're going to send you guys the information on all the new knives that are coming out. You will get updates on these videos, the new knife Wednesdays, the testing, all the stuff that we're going to do. Looking forward to trying this year to bring back Asinine Testing Tuesdays which is always fun. Get to destroy things, blow things up, shoot them, drag them behind quads and stuff. That was always exciting to do. Uh, but make sure that you're following us so that you get all the updates that you need to get. And hey, stay safe out there. God bless. Appreciate you.